Trash talking is not as easy as some of the big stars in MMA like Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, and Chael Sonnen make it look. Just ask Colby Covington. Sure, everybody can think of a clever line after the fact, or maybe you had a pre-written line that you thought was funny, but to be in the middle of an extended war of words while maintaining the level of trash talk that fans have come to expect due to the amount of smooth talkers in the sport these days, that's no easy task. And today we're going to count down 10 times that trash talk utterly failed. Get your goggles and welding masks on because we're going to be reaching critical cringe levels on this one. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are the top 10 worst trash talk attempts in MMA history. Number 10. Dominic Cruz back in Nam. Our first entry on the list proves that even the best trash talkers in the business can sometimes have a bad moment. Dominic Cruz is known for humiliating his opposition in exchanges just by the sheer power of his dismissiveness. That's all you gotta say? You got no reasoning, you got no backup, you're just, you got holes in your game and I hit harder than you. Those are both opinions. Now, there's enough. no facts behind it. But during the UFC Unstoppable tentpole press conference back in 2016, Cruz laid a real stinker during a lengthy exchange with longtime rival Uriah Faber. The two went back and forth several different times during the lengthy press conference, so maybe Dom just ran out of ideas when he hit Faber with this gem. Multiple Last time you won a title that meant anything was in Nam, man. Bro. All the way back at Nam, dude. Is that, like, you uh, won nothing. Is, you haven't won since Nam, as in Vietnam, as in the Vietnam War. This one is confusing for so many reasons. If you were going to exaggerate the length of time it's been since Faber has won a major fight, why not say something like you haven't won since the Industrial Revolution? Or last time you won, dinosaurs walked the earth. Instead, Dom went with Nam to the bewilderment of Faber. Look at his face. The line was weak at best, especially for such a strong verbal sparrer like Cruz. But the delivery just made it all the more hilariously bad. If it doesn't land once, don't try it twice. These press conferences really should only be about 10 minutes. The fighters just eventually run out of insults to hurl. Number 9. Michael Johnson's Dinner Plans here again is an example of two fighters who aren't exactly going to be winning any battle raps in the near future, forced to talk to each other during a lengthy press conference where the expectation from the fans is that everybody is Conor McGregor. Back in 2017, Michael Johnson had the unfortunate pleasure of welcoming human weeble wobble Justin Gaethje to the UFC. Now, there are a few silly exchanges during the presser between the two, like when Gaethje says Johnson won't be able to swim in his deep waters, and Johnson replies, Deep water? Don't, I don't need to swim. I do have my fight in a land, player. Got him. Fighting on land, Justin. But the real crowning jewel here happened a few moments later when Johnson responded to Gaethje's claim he was going to break him piece by piece. But little did Justin know, Johnson doesn't do piece by piece. I eat my shit whole. I don't fucking take piece by piece. Oh. <gasps> oh. I don't chew on nothing the whole time. I'm gonna fucking eat you up for dinner, boy. Nope. Say nothing nope. for leftovers. Nope. You are. Nothing you are. For It's gonna be easy. Okay, eating his shithole wasn't the worst line ever, but what does he even mean in regards to fighting? What is the analogy of not chewing your food to what he does in the cage? And the way this food analogy progressed is just amazing. Not only does Johnson intend to eat Gaethje whole, but he also needed to specify that there would be no leftovers. Do not ever try to split a pizza with Michael Johnson. You will get nothing. Oh, he's so fresh. Number eight, Jeff Monson fucks for free. Jeff Munson is a terrifying looking human being, and in many ways he is terrifying, but his trash talk has been notoriously and inadvertently silly over the years. Who could forget his challenge to Kimbo Slice? And of course, Mike Brown's parody of it. But the crowning achievement in Munson's trash talking career, without a doubt, is the 30 second promo he did for his bout with Mark Kerr at Vengeance Fighting Champions 1 back in 2008. You like watching people get fucked for free? Watch me fuck up Mark Kerr for free on DomKingTV.com. First of all, the trash talk is next level bad here, but the promo is super effective. You can't say your attention was not grabbed when the first thing out of Munson's face was do you like watching people get fucked for free? Of course, everything that follows it is a mess. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna put these hands right around his face and beat his ass. But it's not the worst way to engage your audience. What does make this really bad though is that it was clearly written beforehand. Munson and someone else sat down and wrote this, and then looked at each other and said, yes, this is the promo we want. I mean, the analogy doesn't even really work, as the wording you would traditionally use to describe beating someone up is to fuck someone up, not fuck. I will fuck you up! Although Vandy screwed up the line too, so I guess it's just a tradition in mixed martial arts. Whatever the case, Munson would deliver on his promise and defeat Mark Kerr in the first round, but due to the hilariously bad trash talk, which now has more than 130K views on YouTube, more people saw that promo than saw the fight on Don King TV. Number seven, Harold Howard comes on. Seeing as our next entry happened all the way back in 1994 at UFC 3, Harold Howard's bad trash talk might be what started it all. Like the Gracies ushering in a new era of combat sports, so too did Howard usher in 
cheesy pre-fight promos. Howard was one of eight combatants set to compete in UFC 3, and as was the tradition, a pre-fight package displaying the fighter's abilities with a few words from the athlete would run before their first scheduled bout. It was during that promo that the Canadian karate fighter would grace the world with this classic line. We have a saying back home that if you're coming on, come on. Pulling off the sunglasses was a nice touch. It's unclear as to whether or not if you're coming on, come on is in fact a common saying in the Niagara Falls area of Canada, as none of my research led me to that conclusion. But I'm not about to question Howard, as I indeed do not want to come on. What is clear though is that Harold Howard and that line which looked like it would have come straight out of a Paul Verhoeven film from the 1980s with his delivery are probably more well known than anything else that happened at UFC 3, as the event ended with an alternate Steve Jenham winning via default after fighting just once in the semifinal against Howard since Ken Shamrock was forced out of the final due to an injury. The only reason Jenim was even in the tournament was because Hoist Gracie pulled out after his quarterfinal win due to fatigue. Apparently, the only people who wanted to come on that night were Steve Jenim and Harold Howard. Number 6. Ken Shamrock and Living Death You know your trash talk didn't really land when immediately you need to resort to some sort of physical action to show you're being serious. It doesn't help, of course, when Tito Ortiz is also cackling like a hyena after you deliver your devastating line. Such was the case when Ken Shamrock and Tito Ortiz held a press conference ahead of their fight at UFC 40. The mood lighting was perfect for an ominous threat, but unfortunately what we got from Ken was this. Because if you don't, I'm going to beat you into living death. this word salad of a sentence really takes away from the menace of the words, as Ken clearly just didn't express what it is he wanted to say properly here. Had Ken said, I'm going to beat you half to death, or I'm going to beat you so bad you might die, either of those could have been effective threats. But with In Living Death followed immediately by a smirking laugh by Dana White, and of course Tito's reaction really killed the moment for poor old Ken. The chair kick was an effective attempt to regain some intimidation factor, but not when it popped right up and was immediately caught by the lightning fast Dana White. Tito might be the one laughing now, but we're certainly not done with him on this list. Number 5. Joe B. in High School Back in college, I was leaving a grocery store parking lot when a guy in a truck cut me off. He had a bumper sticker that said, I love dogs. So I yelled out to him, oh, you love dogs? Well, fuck you. Which made no sense at all, but the point I'm trying to make is when you're in a heated confrontation, sometimes a clever line just doesn't come to mind. And such was the case for Joseph Benavidez when he squared off in a stare down against Henry Cejudo on their season as coaches on The Ultimate Fighter. Things started off pretty standard, with Joe B. hitting Cejudo with some lines about being irrelevant. But it was his closing shot that just missed the mark. Being on TV? Because you're irrelevant after it. Oh, this. now you're trying to be cool. Yeah. I used to f guys cool. like you in high school. <laughs> It's unclear if that threat was meant to be I used to fuck guys like you up in high school. Obviously, in mixed martial arts, that line is repeatedly butchered. See our Jeff Munson entry and, of course, poor Vandy. But in the heat of the moment, I can imagine it would be hard to come up with something to say that sounds menacing enough to a professional cage fighter. So it's understandable that Joe B didn't really land the finish on that one. If the immediate reaction from those around you is laughter when you're trash talking, you're either really clever or you said something that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Number four, Josh Koscheck goes motorboating. Truly, Josh Koscheck was ahead of his time when it came to trash talk. He loved to play the heel, and he could dish it out just about as good as anyone. He would certainly thrive in this current era. And as someone who was on the receiving end of a Koscheck barrage once on my podcast, I can tell you that firsthand it was awesome to listen to Josh go to work. But all that said, there's at least one line from Koscheck that is bafflingly, hilariously bad, and I cannot help but crack up every single time I hear it. During season 12 of The Ultimate Fighter, Koscheck was coaching against rival George St. Pierre's team. And in episode 3, while discussing the chances of his sixth pick, Aaron Wilkinson, in defeating GSP's first pick, Michael Johnson, Koscheck had an interesting way of deciding he would rub the victory in St. Pierre's face had Wilkinson won. We can pull this out, man. I'm gonna run over there and probably just, uh, you know, get in George's face and uh, motorboat his ass. <laughs> oh no, Josh, don't motorboat his ass. That would really rub in the defeat. As a threat, I have to say this goes down as one of the least intimidating in MMA history. I have no idea what exactly Josh really meant here, but whatever it is he meant, I think it might have come out hilariously not how he meant. There's just no way. Although that said, he does do the motorboat motion, so maybe it is how he meant it. Whatever the case, trash talking is hard. I can totally see though why the producers of Tough, who probably have 60 hours of footage to sift through every week, decided to keep that insane line in there because it's just so bafflingly silly. It really just came out of nowhere, but that's part of what makes it so funny. Speaking of trash talk on The Ultimate Fighter that really misses the mark, though, Number three, David Tamer's underwear. Being in proximity to Conor McGregor does not in fact make you Conor McGregor. And there is no better example of this being true than when on episode six of The Ultimate Fighter 22, Team McGregor and Team Faber got into a bit of a dust up. McGregor was sowing the seeds of dissent amongst Team Alpha Male as it related to TJ Dillashaw. 
It's cold. Where's the little weasel? Has he got Dwayne with him? Him and Dwayne, come over, take the show, take over the show. Cody Garbrandt did not take kindly to it and jumped up to get in Connor's face. David Tamer, who was on Team McGregor, then decided to take a swing at Garbrandt. Apparently, he didn't get the memo that this was just television. Calm down, get a hold of yourself. Once everyone was separated, the Swedish fighter had these terrifying words for Cody. Take care of your underwears. I'm gonna f you, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> There are so many things I love about this. The line not making any sense, the producers going out of their way to write the line as a caption so you knew exactly how ridiculous this trash talk was, the immediate diffusion of the situation and laughter of several people after the line was delivered, but what really seals it for me, what really gets me laughing is Cody Garbrandt's reaction. They cut to Cody and he is dead serious. Everyone thinks that this was hilarious, but Cody is in full murder mode at being told to take care of his underwear. All right, laundry sheriff. I know this is a mixed martial arts channel, but it reminds me of Psycho Sid's reaction to the stupidity of the Shockmaster in WCW. They call me the Shockmaster. You've ruled the world long enough, Sid Vicious. The reaction just doesn't line up with everything else you're seeing on the screen, which is hilarity. I know people are tired of the Ultimate Fighter, but with moments like this, I think we should keep it. Number two, Tito's Juice Box. Tito Ortiz deserves a lifetime achievement when it comes to bad trash talk. This man is not just a pioneer of flubbing up lines, he's without a doubt the gold standard. And while it's more the accumulation of a lot of small mistakes that make Tito's trash talk so legendarily bad, when he traded barbs with one of the fight game's best ever trash talkers in Chael Sonnen before their fight at Bellator 170 back in 2017, Tito was in rare form. First, he hit us with this piece of gold about Chael's gas problem. Fool's complete gas. All you hear is gas coming out of his ass, and it's not his butt. And then to top things off, at the very end of the interview, Tito decided to try his hand at some prop comedy. And on January 21st, Chael Sonnen is gonna get smashed as the way he do inside the cage. I have so many questions. What prompted Tito to bring a Juicy Juice box to this interview? Did he just happen to have a Juicy Juice box? Was this meant to be a commentary on Chael Sonnen's failed drug tests? Part of me wants to believe that, and another part of me thinks that's giving Tito way too much credit. But the real question is, is smashing a juice box meant to be intimidating or impressive in some way? It's fortunate for Tito that Chael wasn't able to respond due to the format, because he likely would have butchered him for that. Whatever the case, it's hilariously bad trash talk, and it gives me a new appreciation for the prop comedy stylings of Carrot Top. Number one, Cody Garbrandt doesn't chase. There's just something about this one that makes me laugh so much, and I think I've pinpointed it to the absolutely dismissive reaction of Dominic Cruz. Cody Garbrandt and Dominic Cruz were set to fight at UFC 207 for the Bantamweight title, and two weeks beforehand at UFC on Fox 22, the two would do a UFC staple, the split-screen interview that devolves into two fighters talking over each other until the segment is completed. After several exchanges about pillow hands, the size of their heads, and the amount of concussions they've accumulated, Cody, out of seemingly nowhere throws this line at Cruz Down I never had a chase pussy in my life on December 30th I ain't doing it and immediately is dismissed what are you talking about? what are you talking about we'll see I love that Cody just repeats what are you talking about like a child in an argument with another child. You can tell that Cruz, who is a total pro, is trying to sell the intensity of the rivalry and the fight, but cannot help but laugh at this ridiculous line. Never has trash talk been more immediately ruined than by Cruz's completely dismissive what are you talking about. It truly is a thing of beauty. I thought maybe at first Cody meant that he would not be chasing Cruz around the cage, or I guess Cruz is a pussy maybe was the point, but none of it really holds up with the rest of the conversation or makes any sense. But it is telling that Cody mentioned the date of the fight, which makes me believe this was a line he had in his back pocket ready to go. Has nobody learned anything from George Costanza's jerk store line? Well, the jerk store called, they're running out of you. <laughs> While this is the funniest part of the interview, if you have a chance, you need to watch it in its entirety. It really is a comedy masterpiece. You're, it's all good. They'll be yeah. busted on your face. Oh, no, I it's hope so. It'll be fun. I'm gonna eat everything you got. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know in the comments below. You can find MJ, our editor for this video, at Tom J Moore on Twitter. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter, and have yourself a wonderful day. Event this past weekend with Eddie Alvarez and the very tough fight for Demetrius Johnson. The whole scenario begs a few questions. For instance, Eddie Alvarez was ranked as high as the fourth best on the planet planet at lightweight, where his opponent Timothy Nasty Yukin still isn't even listed on some websites. And it was